Good day, everybody. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar, and we'll continue discussing the psychedelic uh, drugs and substances. And we'll go ahead and just start uh, talking about the serotonergic hallucinogenics or the serotonergic psychedelics. As we talked about in the first video, these are substances that um, are, in some cases, analogs of the serotonin molecule or can enhance the uh, inherent or endogenous serotonergic activity within the uh, central nervous system. There are multiple subtypes of serotonin receptors, both in the peripheral and central nervous system, of which uh, it's, it's really a mix and match of different receptors, and it probably differs from person to person as well. Uh, so when I say that it's uh, that we're talking about serotonergic agents, what what we're, what I'm ta what I'm saying is I'm saying that in a very general sense, and then there are very specific types of physiology associated with specific receptors, and it, to make things even more complicated, it depends on what area of the brain those receptors are located. And so I'm kind of of um, being uh, very broad. Uh, but sometimes to really develop a, a better understanding, we need to be a bit more provincial and talk about receptor, uh, specific receptor subtypes and, and so on and so forth. And in some cases, we don't entirely understand. We don't have, the, we don't have a complete understanding. Um, but we do know that it is overall serotonergic activity. And there are certain receptors, uh, serot serotonin receptors that can be blocked and it can be inhibited and be enhanced antagonized and agonized. Uh, so let's just start, I think the, 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 the easiest starting point is starting at a molecule that is very similar, the most similar hallucinogenic to the actual serotonin molecule. So here's serotonin, let's just review, and again, um, yellow, uh, just think of that those as being carbons, I'm kind of short on carbon today, so, and I'm kind of short on hydrogen, so I only put hydrogens where, where it's really relevant, and then you just have to fill in a blank that, oh yeah, there'd be, there'd be hydrogens here as well to, to, to meet the um, octet of the carbon atoms. So this is uh, serotonin, 5-hydroxytryptamine, and we know that this is a trip derived from the amino acid tryptamine. Um, and uh, so here we go. We have 5-hydroxytryptamine. This is the serotonin molecule. And the first psychedelic agent that I'm going to talk about is something known as DMT, which stands for dimethyltryptamine. So as you might imagine, if I modify this a little bit um, and I add methyl groups, dimethyl, that's what it means, two methyl groups, then I can get from this to DMT quite quite easily. See, uh, serotonin is 5-hydroxytryptamine, as I have a hydroxyl group here, and then your tryptamine, basically a tryptamine molecule. Um, so what I do to, to make DMT, dimethyltryptamine, is the first thing I do is I get rid of the um, hydroxyl group here. So I'm going to pop that little guy off. So I've gotten rid of the five uh, hydroxyl group on the five carbon. And then what I do is these hydrogens, this is an NH2 group here, a nitrogen and two hydrogens. What I'll do is I will substitute these hydrogens for methyl or CH3 groups. Uh, of course, removing those, those oxygens um, is going to basically involve um, reducing, okay, I'm reducing the uh, serotonin molecule, and I'm making five, or I'm making dimethyltryptamine. I've removed the five hydroxyl group, and I've substituted the two hydrogen atoms on the nitrogen with methyl groups. So what has that done? Well, that's made this molecule a bit more um, lipophilic, right? Um, and I've reduced it a little bit. Um, and now I have DMT, dimethyltryptamine. It has very remarkably similar, and it sh as, it, as it should because it's so uh, structurally uh, similar to the serotonin molecule, um, will have very, very pronounced serotonergic effects. And um, the nice thing about this DMT molecule is um, that it is, it, it, it is metabolized into inactive metabolites pretty easily. It's metabolized very quickly. Um, you just you you can um, oxidize this, okay? Oxidation reactions uh, work very very easily, very quickly. 
Um, in fact, ingesting, you can't really ingest the DMT molecule because you actually have an enzyme called mono, monoamine oxidase. Um, as you might guess, oxidizes the amine side chain here, um, or MAO, MAO, and um, that, uh, in addition to located within the, the, the systemic parts of your body, that enzyme is also located um, in uh, the intestines, and it's one of the enzymes that you see in the brush border. Uh, it's a brush border enzyme in the, in the microvilli of the intestines. So if I were to ingest a bunch of DMT, um, that DMT would be quickly oxidized and essentially inactivated uh, by a monoamine, monoamine oxidase, the MAO enzyme in the intestinal flora. So we don't actually ingest this, um, or do we? Well, the interesting thing about DMT is um, the use of DMT um, goes back at least 2,000 years, uh, and uh, it's actually still going on today. And uh, we can date this back to uh, Brazil and Peru primarily, where it was used thousands of years ago, and it was uh, a... Um, it was used medicinally, and um, I believe there is some evidence that psychedelics may have had a, a role, played a role in some of the sacrificing um, that occurred in that region as well, though I'm not as uh, versed on the, that, that history, uh, so you'll have to take anything I say there um, very, very cautiously and very unoptimistically and very skeptically. Okay, so... Uh, what they what what they do is they uh, there there are a, a, a few different um, uh, trees. They use the bark and the leaves of bushes and trees, uh, a few different types, and they make kind of a tea-like substance. And then in a ritualistic manner, okay, so it's a very ritualized. It's not uh, what, what what goes on in these countries is it's not an abuse type pattern. Okay, it is not a a recreational. Like, um, I, I, I go home and I, I, I drink a, a six-pack of beer every night with, with my friends after I get off of work, something like that, where it's a real recreational thing. This is a very highly ritualized, um, religious in, in, in some, uh, some areas of, of, of the world, a highly religious um, ceremony. Uh, so it's not this willy-nilly, oh, we're going to go out and drink this tea. It's a very ornate, highly ritualized procedure that occurs um, and, and what happens is when they, when they drink this, the, the tea, quote-unquote, not only does it contain DMT, but it contains um, some other substances, one of which is a molecule that actually inhibits the monoamine oxidase enzyme. So you drink this down, it inhibits the MAO enzyme, and what does that mean? That means that the DMT is not oxidized, and the DMT is then absorbed into the systemic uh, circulation, um, now, granted, a whole lot of that DMT that, that you ingest, um, if you're in, a, in, in one of these ceremonies, that DMT um, will be um, susceptible to first-pass metabolism, okay, because that, that blood is going to go through the liver. There's going to be first-pass occurring, but there's still going to be quite a bit more DMT that's going to make it through first-pass and get into the brain in these rituals, and that's what happens is these uh, people report having very intense psychedelic experiences as a result uh, primarily of the effects of dimethyltryptamine. Um, there's a lot of interesting uh, social, sociological commentary um, behind these rituals, and um, the name of the substance that is used is known as ayahuasca. Um, and these rituals have actually become popular among among more industrialized cultures in contemporary times, we see a lot of what we call uh, psychonauts, um, psychedelic tourists, people that actually go to countries like Brazil, countries like per Peru, and seek out a shaman, um, and they seek out these rituals to in, uh, help enhance their lives or help them get through traumas to help them even... Um, deal with uh, with addictions and um, other uh, depression and other other issues. It's actually there's a fascinating uh, fascinating um, area of, of 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 sociology, of psychology, of of neurobiology that that I, I'm really not qualified to to really comment on. But it is certainly fascinating. There's some incredible stories. Uh, there is actually a significant amount of um, research 
that happened here in the state where I live, just just north of uh, me a, a few hours, not at New Mexico State University where I work, but at, um, um, hold on here, my computer is deciding to uh, go crazy. There we go. Uh, should, should have a Windows machine. Uh, that's what I get for having a Mac. Anyway, uh, the, so the significant amount of research has occurred up a few hours north of me up at uh, University of New Mexico or UNM uh, back in the 90s. Um, a Spanish, I believe it was a, a gentleman from Spain who uh, was... Uh, it, either, it was either working on postdoc or working on his doctoral, did a lot of uh, research on uh, DMT, so we have some pretty good contemporary research um, there, um, uh, at least uh, lab-based in, in vitro uh, type research on um, uh, human test subjects. Um, so there are some really interesting stories about that, um, and when you look at the safety of it, um, be, you know, it's not an abused substance. People do not seem to be abusing this. It does seem that a lot of people that use this, that are involved in these rituals, um, there there have been some 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 evidence that, that suggests that the, a lot of these people, their lives are enhanced greatly by um, by integrating this uh, this ritual, the the the, the um, psychedelic experiences that they they receive from DMT. Uh, by integrating these experiences into their their life philosophy, um, and apparently they have very profound experiences in their terms like ego death, and people talk about um, being able to get rid of um, the, the ego and being able to analyze um, their their lives and their, their emotions and um, uh, things from very very different perspectives. I, I don't I don't have the um, the personal or anecdotal uh, perspective to really talk about about that and I don't have the psychological background um, to talk about it with any amount of um, seriousness if you will but uh, it is fascinating it, it appears to be very helpful for some people and it appears to be very safe um, very few deaths there, there are a couple of people that have died and the, the circumstances seem kind of interesting and I, I don't know that it was necessarily a result of the, the ayahuasca tea it may have been some other things um, certainly, um, there's always a risk for a serotonin syndrome, and anybody who takes uh, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, the SSRIs, these are antidepressants, um, uh, could be at risk for developing serotonin syndrome too, where you get hyperthermic and tachycardic, and um, uh, there is a risk for that. And um, in fact, people that do these ceremonies, that's one of the recommendations: is they re that, that you have to be off of. Um, monamine oxidase inhibitors, you have to be off of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, you have to be off of these antidepressants for uh, uh, several weeks at least uh, to have uh, a safe uh, ayahuasca experience or, or, or um, journey. So anyway, uh, it's really interesting and there's actually um, some limited ayahuasca use that, that happens here in New Mexico. I, I think it'd be kind of fascinating to um, to research on that a little bit, but um, it's it's a church up north in, in Santa Fe, and I, I don't um, I think they're pretty closed about it, and it's not it's not this this open thing. Um, a DMT is a is a Schedule One substance, so uh, it's uh, other than for very special religious um, ceremonial type of um, uh, of processes. Um, you know, if if you were just uh, out there having um, I. I willy-nilly doing this stuff, you could uh, obviously face um, um, uh, face legal um, problems uh, associated with that, criminal criminal problems. Um, but there you go. That that's, is something that's really interesting, real fascinating, a lot of history there. Um, and now we're actually, uh, in more contemporary times, we actually, people um, are um, inhaling or vaporizing, um, in, in a sense, the, the DMT. And we actually see a lot of that, and, and people will take these DMT hits, and because the, the half-life of, of, of dimethyltryptamine is so short, um, people can, can in, in, inhale this DMT, and they can have this very intense psychedelic experience, and then, you know, within, within, within under an hour, um, several minutes, um, they can have this psychedelic experience, and then they can be... Um, out back out of the psychedelic experience and, and, and functioning relatively normally. 
Um, and some people have even termed this like the the workings man psychedelic or the the gentleman's lunch or yeah there there are some uh, terms there but um, that is becoming very popular. We we see a lot of it um, being used here in the United States. It's still a, a Schedule One substance. I don't even know that there are really good statistics on DMT use. I, I assume that that there probably the prevalence is is reasonably high. I'm not aware of. Um, significant um, morbidity or mortality associated with its use, um, but it it has the same very intense effects. Of course, it's not being subjected to the the first pass uh, metabolism that you would see with um, you know ayahuasca and DMT that was ingested. Um, so there we go. I've been going on for a long time, and I haven't really spent a whole lot of time talking about the chemistry, but the chemistry is fairly straightforward with DMT. It's it's really just, it, it's a modified form of serotonin, so it's going to have very pronounced serotonergic effects. Um, people are going to have, uh, generally are going to have pretty, um, pretty interesting hallucinogenic experiences, um, and uh, DMT does not appear to be as a potent a hallucinogen as some of the other serotonergic agents, in particular LSD, which is an agent that I'll be talking about in subsequent videos. Okay, guys, I think I've um, pretty much covered what needs to be covered there. It's kind of fascinating, a lot of really cool history there, um, really interesting. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for hanging in there, guys.